This is Around Atlanta, and we're inside the Purple Door. Hello, I'm Dwight Eubanks, and you're watching Around Atlanta. Dwight, for those who don't know who you are, can you tell us who you are and what you do? I can't imagine anybody being in America or anywhere in the universe that don't know who Dwight Eubanks is. Well, what do you do? Everything. What do you need done? Okay, okay. <laughs> my real job, obviously, is hair. That's my real profession. I've been a licensed cosmetologist for over 30 years. But uh, with that, I do a whole lot of other business venture. You have to have multiple stream of income coming in to make things happen the way that I like for them to happen. So my real main thing is, is anything beauty. Beauty and fabulous luxury is what Dwight Eubanks does. Dwight, how did you get your start as a salon owner? <laughs> Crazy. Uh, black boy from Atlanta, Georgia, back in 1989 is when I ventured out into the Purple Door. And uh, it was from a salon that I worked at, what was called Leaven. And uh, from there, I went to Saks Fifth Avenue, was style director for Saks Fifth Avenue for five years, and left there and had the great idea of opening my own salon. Nobody told me, idiot, don't do it. Uh, but I did. It was my dream. I was young and beautiful, had a wonderful clientele. So I opened up a salon on Lenox Road, uh, 2770 Lenox Road. And this was the Plantation Shopping Center, which was, you know, the transformation of what we know it as today. That used to be houses. We built that out and um, was paying $12,000 a month for rent. Nobody told me, idiot, uh, don't do it. That was 1989, paying $12,000, catch it. So uh, that's how the whole thing came about. We did not have a name um, on the salon uh, because everything that I liked was taken. Uh, so the door was painted purple. And uh, we just told people to look in, when you come into the parking lot, look for the purple door. And that went on for about two years. We still didn't have a name telling people to look for the purple door. So I just said, hey, let's just call the purple door. It was not registered, so we registered, and the rest is history. What inspired you to be a hairstylist? I've always loved playing with my sister's dolls. I come from two generations of ministers. Uh, and I have two sisters, I'm in the middle. And uh, I always got the opportunity to, to play with trucks and balls and things that was not appealing to me because my sister had Barbie to play with, playing with their clothes and their hair. I always was intrigued with that because at that time I didn't understand that it was a girl thing, you know, you, you're young, you know. And for me growing up, if they told me not to do it, I did it. You know, so uh, my father was just, you know, a minister, his son playing with a doll from the South. It was just a problem. So um, that's, well, that was my introduction to hair, you know, and I never stopped playing with dolls. I just played with them growing up and um, they talked back and what have you, but then they didn't talk back. You have several television and movies credits to your name. Did you ever think that you would be on reality TV? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Well, you know, back, what, eight, nine years ago, it's been nine, well, ten years ago. Oh, wow, time really goes fast. You know, we didn't really understand what reality TV was. It was new. Uh, and I went into it just to promote the salon. And somehow they did everything but promote the Purple Door than the salon. You know, we, we've shot in here and... Uh, We've shot me doing hair, but not once have they shown it on the network to me doing hair. So it's interesting. So, um, no, I never would have thought it. I was always behind the scene. I've worked on uh, several celebrities. My very first celebrity was Cicely Tyson uh, in the early 80s. And, um, and the list goes on and on and on and on. And then doing um, video shoots and magazine layouts. There was a place back in the 80s that was really known for uh, editorial work. And I shot a lot of Macy's, uh, catalogs, and a lot of Rich's department store at that time and uh, for hair and makeup. So I was always behind the scene, never in front of the camera. And I grew up uh, working with Bronner Brothers Hair Company back in the 70s uh, as a model. 
So I was always, um, and I started out helping backstage from modeling, and that's kind of how the formal introduction happened. So never would I have thought that my life would have gone into this direction. But it's interesting that uh, I'm forever grateful for all the obstacles and everything that has happened, happened. And you know, God doesn't make a mistake, you know. So uh, he had a better plan for me than I had for myself. And I've just learned to be obedient. Dwight, tell us about your salon, The Purple Door. Where is it located and what are some of your signature services? Well, we're located at 321 Edgewood, the historical um, area in Atlanta, Georgia, Auburn Avenue, Edgewood Avenue, one street over from Auburn Avenue, two blocks up from the King Center, Ebenezer Baptist Church, the historical area. Uh, when we moved here uh, 20 something, what, 18, 19 years ago, it was totally different from what we see it today. It has totally changed. Change. This was a drug haven infested area, and uh, we moved from Buckhead to the West End, and from the West End we came here. And uh, it's been uh, an interesting journey. Where can we find pricing for your services? Uh, it's online. You go to uh, purpledoorsalon.com, um, the website. It's all connected. Dwight Eubanks, Purple Door, Eubanks Collection, all of it is connected together. So our specialty is beauty, you know, um, and it's beauty and healthy, beautiful hair. You know, we do hair extensions, we do locks, um, but it's so much misinformation out there now too. The consumer has gotten overwhelmed with information and a lot of it is not good information, misinformation. So we try, constantly try to educate the consumer about her needs and what your needs are may not be somebody else's needs. So it's not just a general situation, it's one-on-one -on -one is how we like to customize. And that's kind of like the introduction uh, for me when I got in the industry and we're diverse. You know, we do all ethnicities of, of groups of hair, textures, because the world has changed from um, 30, 40 years ago. You know, you got multi-texture, you got uh, multicultural relationships. So things is just not black and white anymore. You have worked with many celebrities in your career. Who have you worked with? Oh my God. Uh, like I said, Cicely Tyson, I'm, uh, Jermaine Jackson, um, uh, Susan DePaz, um, what's the Tina Turner girl, um, and Susan Bassett, uh, I mean, it's, uh, Angela Bassett. You know, it's just so many, because again, I was doing a lot of the editorial work. When they came to Atlanta, they need a hairdresser or a barber, um, they came to the Purple Door, you know, and um, that was my introduction. So the list goes on and on and on and on and has traveled all over the world, doing, still do, you know. So um, it's been a wonderful life. We have to talk about your fashion. How did you acquire such good taste in fashion? Well, you know, I'm going back to my two sisters, you know, playing with Barbie. Um, that was my introduction, and my mother uh, was a you know church. You know, you dressed up to go to church back then, and that was you know my introduction. My mother was the thirteenth out of fourteen kids. She was the first girl, and she had to take care of all the siblings, laundry, and what have you, maintaining the house. And uh, so my mother, when she got on her own, she was not pressing no, no clothes, she wasn't pressing no blue jeans, so we didn't wear blue jeans. So um, we dressed, we dressed up, you know, so I, it was just a creature of habit, you know, and, um, and it's just a lifestyle, and I just grew to like it, and I, I don't know no, nothing else. If I knew something else, I would do something else, but this is where I'm most comfortable, you know. Um, blue jeans has never really been my thing. In fact, they're not very comfortable. You know, it just ball your nuts all up, and you know, it just, it's not a comfortable fabric. And the way I'm the swag, you know, down on your hips at my age, that's, that's a wrap. So um, that's not something that I'm comfortable in. What inspired you to open a salon in Atlanta? I'm from Atlanta. I'm from Atlanta, Simpson Road, Dixie Hill, Southern Country Boy, you know, Greater Baby, you know, moved from Dixie Hill to uh, Adamsville. 
Cali Heights area. So, you know, this is home. I've lived in Canada. You know, I worked with Soul Scissors back in the early 80s uh, between Atlanta, New York, and Canada. Um, was following our dream of love, and that's how I ended up in Canada. And um, so I'm just always come back to home. You know, I still travel between New York and Paris now. But Atlanta is home, this is where my family is. And I like it, you know, and when I get out of it, I get on the plane and go. What do you love most about Atlanta? The food. <laughs> Fried chicken, collard greens, mashed potatoes, you know, potato salad, sweet potato pies, and all those good things, you know. It's, I love the French food too, don't get me wrong. I love New York, but again, Atlanta Southern cuisine is, you know, one of my favorites. Thanks, Dwight, for having us. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you for having me. <laughs>